Hello there, how are you? Welcome back to How I Did It and the Off-Grid Barn Exterior Metal Siding. Yeah, I'm still working on this nonsense. But it's time that I get on it and I am going to utilize some tools that I haven't used in quite a while. This Kodiak Inverter Charger Generator Portable and my new Bauer. 3 8 inch driver. Now know that everything that I'm using in my videos I purchased. These are not sponsored videos. So with that being said the first piece I need to get cut in is this uh, gabled end ridge final top piece over that vent. Went up there went ahead and got my measurement. Now I'm going to come down here and I haven't even started this generator to see if it was charged up. It's been sitting collecting dust, but I'm kind of of the mindset seeing different things that are going on. It's kind of important that we know that the tools that we have purchased in the past, and I purchased this thing probably three or four years ago, still work and work well. So with that being said, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> little crazy puppies. As you can tell, I'm puppy sitting. Um, with that being said, this little grinder, simple purchase from Harbor Freight. It's nothing fancy. I don't think it would hold up commercially, but for the limited amount of cutting and stuff that I do for 20 bucks, it was worth its weight in gold. I don't remember what I paid for that charger. I know I overpaid for that charger. The prices have really come down since I purchased it. But as you're going to see, it worked fantastic. I did not have any issues with it. And mind you, I'm cutting out there in some pretty, I don't want to say extreme temperatures because it's not Arizona by any stretch of the imagination. But it is hot and I cut this just a straight cut. I initially took the grinder and the the generator up there thinking I was going to cut all of it up here on top of the double scaffolding. And I was like, this is crazy. It was so hot. I ended up grabbing a thermometer and checking what the temperature was, which it was kind of ridiculous that I did that because then all I was thinking the whole time is, man, it's hot, man, it's hot. <laughs> you're better off not knowing how hot you are. You know you're hot. You just don't realize how hot you are. Alrighty, so let's get back into it. The first thing I had to do was get all my measurements. And again, we'll go back to last week's video of measure twice cut once so I spent especially with how many cuts I had to do on this not that it was complex but you just want to make sure that you get everything on there the right way that way you're not spending all this time measuring and then cutting you go up there to put it in place and then the doggone thing doesn't fit so feeling all confident with my measurements and scribing everything onto the back of this piece of metal, I proceeded to go ahead and cut. And as you can see, this little generator, man, it's pretty, it's pretty awesome. Now I have my other gas power generator and I could have just plugged an extension cord into that. It's over in the utility shed and made my cuts. But again, like I said, with all the craziness going on in the world today, kind of need to make sure that the little tools that you have in your toolbox are all set up and ready to go. So with that being said, I get my final cut done here and then it'll be time to go up and kind of do a temporary fit. Get any last minute tweaks measured out that I need to get measured out, make my marks, take it back down and go ahead and get those cuts done. Now something that I decided to do in the past was not be afraid to manipulate this metal around a little bit. It it will reform back into place. You know, you can tweak it 
a little bit here and there. So how I probably didn't put this up the way a professional would put it up, but how I opted to do this was put it up behind it and kind of curve it down in. As you'll see, it manipulated really well. And the only reason I'm isolating this portion of the video is to let you all see, don't be afraid to kind of bend it a little bit. You can take a, you know, a hammer and kind of tap things back into place once you get it situated. So even if when you are putting it in there, it kind of gets a little deformity to it, just know that you can get it back in place and looking really good. Now I had to take, to get this bottom rib, we'll call that part that's sticking out to go over the rib below it, I just wrapped some painter's tape around the end of my screwdriver again flex the metal out as I was pushing it down and then it popped into place I used a little bit of force with it but as you can see boom there it is and when I put the ceiling up in here that will look seamless I mean I was just really tickled with how well it came out now know that this took longer probably than what it should have Again, going up and down the scaffolding, working by myself, but that generator worked great. My $19 grinder with the 40 grit cutoff wheel worked great. This little 3 inch, 3 8 inch driver worked fantastic. Now the thing I need to do is get some new um, driver tips. These ones from Harbor Freight, I hate to say it, they're kind of hinky. They have a little magnet in them and after using it any amount of time that magnet comes out so then they're not magnetized and that makes them a pain in the butt to use but as you can see this thing went up in there it really looks great from the floor it looks like a professional did it <laughs> This is a look at it from the in interior, so I need to get my spray foam in, and I'm going to also mount the mini split to this wall, and that's looking at it from the ground. So now, next week's video is going to be getting this piece lined up. Now these ribs, they're only five ribs high, or the siding's only five ribs high. But as you notice, there's seven ribs there, so I'm going to have to do some MacGyvering on this side as well. Alrighty then, I want to thank you all for stopping by. Have an absolutely wonderful and blessed week. I'll see you next time on How I Did It.